Hi again, everyone. So I'm here to set the scene essentially on what's been happening in the aviation industry through the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm going to be doing that by analyzing some of the traffic trends we've identified at uh, FlightAware. So we'll look at how these trends have panned out in different geographies, different sectors of aviation, such as commercial passenger flights, cargo flights, business aviation, and some other slices and dices that really help visualize the impact of COVID-19 on aviation. To help with the visualization, I'll be using real statistics that FlightAware captured through its core business of being the world's leading aviation company. So how does FlightAware capture and provide this aviation data to some of the world's leading airlines and companies? Well, the bottom part of this slide depicts how FlightAware captures many different data sets. So we, of course, have ADSB. We also have data link messages, schedules data, flight plans, ATC and swim messages, plus some customer supplied data. We take all that data and then we interpret it using something called our hyperfeed engine you see in the middle of the slide. So for context, we're assessing some 10,000 aircraft positions, uh, messages a second, 10,000 messages a second in the hyperfeed engine. And hyperfeed's job is essentially to, um, it uses machine learning and algorithms to determine what we can take as trusted data and it rules out anything it determines as erroneous data. The end result is the most accurate and comprehensive data in the world that's becoming trusted as a single source of truth for what's happening in the aviation industry. So next slide, please. So you've seen how we capture that data and we're using that essentially to create some of the views I'm gonna go through now. So for the purposes of the analysis of what's happened to flight traffic during the pandemic, we've generated a series of graphs and all of the graphs were created using flight totals for a week that were then plotted uh, for the, for the uh, yearly average. So here we can see we have some views plotted for 2019 in blue. So 2019 being a reference year where there was no pandemic. We also have 2020 shown in gold and 2021 shown in orange. So most of the graphs will focus on commercial passenger aircraft worldwide, except for where I've labeled otherwise. So starting off with a big picture overall trends. So in 2019, this blue line you see, we see the typical variation between summer and winter of about 10%. However, in 2020, the gold line, we see the initial drop starting in late January, which was due to flight volume in China rapidly ramping down. Traffic was persistent through February, and then in March, it became a global drop in every region of the world and bottoming out roughly around mid-April in terms of flight volumes. It then slowly recovered into spring and summertime, and then more or less flatlining from August 2020 to the end of the year. And this is what we call a classic U-shaped drop in 2020. So in 2021, the orange line, we see an initial early decrease of traffic due to some lockdowns kicking in. So just after the festive holiday lockdown relaxations, uh, we then saw a rebound at the end of January to the present day. So this slide sort of gives you the idea of the global commercial passenger airlines view, but what I'm about to show you will, will show you how the pandemics impacted different parts of the world, different parts of aviation, and it's certainly been um, a non-uniform recovery. Next slide, please. So let's start with the geographic variations. So here we've got six different regions where we've tracked the commercial passenger flights activity. Starting off with North America, uh, most closely resembles the global average graph I showed just now. So we have that classic U-shaped uh, uh, drop and recovery. We then have flat lining ever since the late summer uh, Northern hemisphere. And then that flat lining continues into 2021 then a small recovery from February onwards in 2021. 
So South America has been a different story. It was up year over year at the start of 2020, and then it had a much larger drop than North America, and the recovery has been much, much slower. This is both due to Brazil being hard COVID hit, as well as a large number of countries making up South America, all with varying lockdown and immigration restrictions. Traffic peaked around the holidays in 2020, and flight volume has now slid back in 2021 by about 10 to 15 percent from that summer peak in South America. Moving on to Europe, so Europe is unique in that it's the only region we've seen where there's been a double dip. So it had the U-shaped recovery like North America, but the European flight schedules are typically much heavier in the summer than they are in the winter, and that winter weakness showed at the end of 2020 and into 2021 where it's well below its summer peak. Moving on to the Middle East, which is very dependent, as we know, on connecting traffic and had a very slow recovery, similar to South America. So the Middle East has recovered steadily throughout 2020, but has flatlined since around the end of that year. So moving on to Asia. So as a whole, we've split Asia into sort of two different stories here. So we broke out China from the overall Asia numbers to give you a distinct China view. But looking at Asia, which does include the China numbers, so we see that early dip due to the dip in China uh, with, with the early onset of, of the COVID, and then an extended dip as the rest of Asia starts closing borders. The recovery got up to around 50 to 60% of flight volume in Asia as a whole throughout the year. And then in early 2021, we see another dip before traffic starts to pick back up. China itself, you can see the dip came much, much sooner and was generally much deeper, but the recovery has been very much stronger. So from October onwards, it was back to around 85% of prior year volumes. And right now, the latest China data is showing a recovery back to pre-COVID levels. That is, we're seeing flight volumes right now matching 2029 levels. Next slide, please. So let's look now at different operation types where we see different stories. So on the left here, I have the passenger airline flights within to and from the United States, which is roughly in line with the global and North American numbers on the previous slides. The biggest notable difference is the fair bit of recovery the last few weeks of February and sustained through March, dipping slightly in April. Now on the right hand side of the slide, we have the business aviation. So this is your jet powered turboprops using, oh, sorry, jet powered aircraft and turboprops being used for business aviation. So here we see the recovery in 2020 was much more V-shaped rather than the uh, extended U-shape uh, that we see in the commercial airlines side. In the terms of flight volume, there was a much stronger recovery. And by the end of 2020, it was pushing somewhere in the 85 to 90 percent range from late summer onwards. And 2021 has matched the peak of 2019 and the early part of 2020. So it's been a very strong, robust recovery. And we've seen some dynamic shifts within those numbers, too. So there's been less of these corporate in-house flight departments operating and more of a shift to charter as business meetings are relatively light and there's a lack of need for business travel uh, due to those meetings being light. Uh, also, particularly with the closed borders and general concerns about spreading of COVID. And we've also seen uh, some marginal passengers or families who would have otherwise booked first class airline tickets, but are now moving up into the low end of business aviation charter. So that's boosting those numbers on the right hand side. Next slide, please. So similarly, we've seen a very different traffic trend for cargo. Uh, here on the right side of the slide again is the cargo flights within to and from the United States. So there was no dip at all in 2020 and the growth actually continued throughout the full year, even with the onset of COVID. So the growth was fueled by the expansion of e-commerce or e-shopping and also by the growth of Amazon's own aircraft operations. So in 2021, it continued from where it was after the holiday season and then we had a quick dip and a quick recovery mid-February. 
we believe this was most probably associated with the severe winter weather that affected uh, Texas and, and, and other surrounding states in the United States that caused that dip. Next slide, please. So another way to look at this non-uniformity is this time by the lengths of flights. So in this graph, we are color coding the flight lengths and globally comparing 2020 and early 2021 numbers to pre-COVID year of 2019. So the year 2020 started with slight growth in all segments and some stronger growth of about 10% for flights under an hour. The dip in February into March was due flight volumes dropping in China and then really all stage lengths of flights dropping together in March as the whole world starts to shut down due to the now global pandemic. Since then, we've seen a couple of places where the growth based on the stage length has really differentiated itself. So that's where the initial bump in late April into May for the very long haul flights of eight to 16 hours was driven by the passenger airlines starting to utilize converted passenger aircraft for all cargo services, particularly between the United States, Europe and China to make up for the lack of belly cargo that uh, belly cargo availability during that hot demand period for uh, cargo. Uh, since sort of late summer, we've seen the group that is flights under four hours have a more robust recovery coming back to now in March to April 2021 to around 60% of what they were previously. Whereas the flights over four hours have had a weaker recovery, largely due to the closed borders and other immigration restrictions. Next slide, please. Lastly, let's look at a mix of different aircraft size. So in gold, here is the 2020 and early 2021 flight volumes for commercial passenger airlines activity. Then the blue here on the right hand side, the blue uh, line reflects to the right hand scale and it's a percentage of wide bodies as a fraction of the number of narrow bodies operating. So here we see the wide bodies were hit more by the flying reductions in February and March 2020 as the world closed borders, but then saw a resurgence in late April and May 2020 due to the long, long haul wide body flying of passenger aircraft now fitted to carry only cargo, enabling those passenger airlines an opportunity to still earn revenue in the absence of passengers. Since then, the wide bodies have experienced a dip and a sort of recovery, and it remains to be seen where we end up in terms of the mix in the recovery of long haul flying that is typically done with the wide bodies versus the short haul flying typically done with the narrow bodies on shorter sectors. And these are less likely to experience border control or immigration restrictions. Next slide, please. So final slide, um, in summary, Commercial passenger airlines have leveled off at a modest circa 50% recovery of traffic 19s, uh, traffic, of um, traffic levels in late 2020 compared with 2019. But in February to April 2021, we've seen the recovery steadily grow to around 60% of that 2019 level. However, as, as we've seen, this recovery profile is very diverse geographically some very slow recoveries and some double dips, as well as some strong recoveries in different regions of the world. Other operation types outside of commercial airlines, including both business, aviation and cargo, have seen more substantial recoveries, more robust recoveries and even growth throughout the pandemic. Different recovery profiles and stage lengths are really split into flights under four hours that recovered a little bit more strongly compared to flights grouped above four hours, uh, including long haul. We've had a weaker recovery due to the lack of long haul travel due to immigration and border restrictions. We've also seen that multiple changes to the mix of aircraft size, and that's really impacting airport planning for how many wide body gates, narrow body gates they have. So that really impacts in terms of utilization as the wide bodies came in carrying all cargo, but then those flights were reduced as more typical cargo aircraft came back. And now we're seeing the stronger recovery of the narrow body aircraft. So that's the uneven recovery landscape mapped and visualized using flight aware data. And that concludes my analysis. So I believe I'm.